Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we would test out three different paintbrushes. One, a relatively cheap paintbrush. The second one, a middle kind of priced paintbrush. And the third one being a really expensive paintbrush. Just to see how they compare with one another, whether it's worth splashing out on a paintbrush or whether you can get away with having a dirt cheap paintbrush to create your paintings or create the work that you want them to do. So I'll grab the laptop and we can see what we can find. Okay, so I've got my laptop up and running and I've pre-selected three paintbrushes and I'm starting off with the cheap paintbrush. Right, so the cheap paintbrush is actually a children's paintbrush. It was the cheapest brush I could find and it's 15 pence. It is so cheap. I think that's the same price as like a Freddo or something like that. Um, and it says these thick soft bristle brushes have chunky jolly colored wooden handles that are ideal for small hands to grip. Oh, kind of small. These brushes are perfect for home and school use. Try using with ready mixed paint such as poster paint to encourage children to experiment with color. That is fine. I can be a child for the day. 15 pence. I will add that to my basket. Fantastic. And nope, we'll keep shopping. And I think this is, is this the middle one? Nope. <clears throat> and this is the middle one that I'm going to purchase. So it's an Escoda Versatile Kalinsky Synthetic Series 1540. None of them words mean an absolute thing to us but apparently it's a perfect synthetic alternative to Kalinsky sable designed with versatility as its main feature really lives up to its name with exceptional snap superior absorption and fluid retention snap I, I don't know what snap means hmm. it is excellent for use with both watercolor and oil acrylic allowing artists to create fine details as well as providing superior performing for colouring larger areas and background, blah blah blah. So that's £14.90, and pence. so we'll add that to the basket, and we'll see how that turns out. And carry on shopping, and then this is my expensive one that I'm going to purchase, but this one's £52. The, <laughs> the most expensive paintbrush on this site that I use is £461.76 and and unfortunately I do not have that money to test that out for you um, but if you have a ton of money then go for it you know 460 quid you know that should be oh it's not even it's not even in stock that happened it's due soon <sighs> so expensive Hopefully it comes in like a pure gold case, diamond encrusted, or something like that to warrant that amount of money, but who knows. Anyway, the expensive one, an expensive one for me, is £52. I think £52 is a lot of money to spend on a brush. I've never spent this amount of um, money on a brush before, but it is a Princeton Synthetic Sable Series 4050, size 30, round. And again, none of that means a thing to us. So apparently it's best for watercolour brushes. The watercolour brushes are made with a blend of golden Taclon hairs, which I don't know what they are, in a variety of different diameters developed for Princeton by master Japanese brush maker Nahoide Takamoto. These brushes take the tack from Takamoto to give the Taclon fibres their distinctive name. Oh, so it's a Japanese-inspired brush. Um, brush fibers, through in the synthetic bristles, have the appearance of genuine sable hairs. Again, I have no idea what sable hairs are. The fibers are held in place with a golden fur, and the handles are fashioned from marbled red hardwood. Ooh, fancy. The wash brushes have clear acrylic handles. This brush style absorbs water easily and paints subtle strokes with a natural snap. Again, they're using this snap um, thing that I have no idea what it means. Um, choo -choo -choo, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. So we will add that one to the basket as well, £52. 
So I've got a 52 pound one, a 14 pound 90 and a 15 pence one. And we'll wait for them to arrive <laughs> and we'll see what they okay. can do. And just like magic, I've got the three brushes right here. This is the 15 pence brush and it's a lot smaller than the others, quite thin. It's very stiff and rough and it feels cheap, but if you said to us that was two pound, I'd be like, okay, two pound. So it's, it, it's not terrible for 15 pence. It's pretty decent. And that might be the stack snap the runabout. I don't know, but so we're, we're going to test all these with paint as well to see how they are. And this is the medium brush here. It's a lot softer than the 15 pence one, the cheap one. It's quite nice. It's bigger. It's a lot taller. And I think this said it was um, versatile, so it's good with kind of all paints. Yeah, the versatile one. Um, but yeah. Seems like a decent brush. We'll see how that gets on. And then we've got this expensive brush. I think it was 50 odd pound or whatever it was. Um, and it is, it's huge. It's absolutely massive. I wasn't expecting it to be so big. This again might be the snap they're talking about. But this feels more like a makeup brush. It's so soft. Um... And both of these had came with a protective cap over the top of them, but I took them off and I couldn't get them back on. This just came exactly how it is in a little plastic bag. Um, but it looks it looks nice. I like the red and the gold. But we'll get some paper and some paint out and see how each one performs. Okay, so I've got my paper with a bit of green paint on. And first up, we are going to test the cheapest brush. So the children's brush. Um, and it paints perfectly fine. Paints really well, actually. It does have a more um, scratchy, textured feel to it because it is a stiffer brush, but it paints very well. I wouldn't be mad at that. I wouldn't complain at that. I would happily use that paintbrush, and for 15 pence, it's a complete steal. So, yep, that's absolutely fine. We'll move on to the middle brush. So the medium expensive one. And we'll see how this does. This is supposed to be a versatile brush, so it should be fine with acrylic. Oh, oh, actually. You probably can't tell on the camera, but that, that's super soft. Oh, that kind of changed my mind because I was wanting the cheap one to win. Ah, oh, it's ruined it for us. That's actually a really, really nice brush. It's it's strange. The cheaper one it has like a scratchy kind of texture to it, whereas this one it it's just it just kind of glides onto the paper. Like, oh, see if I can get a closer up of that. Hang on. Right, look at that. It's just beautiful. Sorry, I had a paintbrush in my mouth. Like that. And then you've got it super textured there with the cheap brush. And that is just so soft. That's lovely. That's really nice. I'm really happy with that one. But we'll test this expensive one out. I know they said... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm apologising to a camera. Um, I know they said this one was meant for watercolours, but I'm, I don't have any watercolour in the studio at the minute, so I'm just going to test it out with some acrylic and see how it does. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's If I'm honest, it just feels like a bigger version of the medium paintbrush, that one. Um, it doesn't feel like it has much difference. I can imagine that it would be quite nice for watercolours. But for the acrylic paint, it just gives a very similar, if not the same effect as the medium brush. 
I'll bring that closer so you can see. So that one there's the obviously the medium one and that one's the expensive. But there you can see the texture of the cheap brush. So ah, I really wanted the I was really excited for the cheap one, but this one kind of destroyed it, if I'm honest with you. But I'll I'll clean these up and I'll get back to you in a minute and we'll we'll go through the okay, results. I'm back from washing the brushes, and I have to admit I was quite surprised by the differences in the paint brushes. I for me I'm quite a cheapskate, so I immediately wanted the 15 pence paintbrush to wow me over, and it did because it is 15 pence. Um, but I did notice when I was washing the brushes, this one didn't. It didn't um, clean as well as the other two. The other two are pretty much back to normal. This one, it, it's been dyed and it, it didn't wash as easily as the other two. Um, so that's one thing I noticed. Um, but for me, I would have to say that this one was the best brush by far. This one, it's... Oh, I don't think it's worth £50 and I know you're supposed to use it with watercolour so that might have something to do with it. But... For me, these feel very similar to one another, almost the same, like, if you look at the kind of textures of the paint they left, they both look basically the same. Um, but saying that, the kids brush, the cheap brush, if you want a textured painting, that's the kind of effect it gets there. Um, and they'll be perfect for your kids as well, and they're not going to break the bank. And it did perform well. I don't think it will last particularly long, so you might want to buy a few just to have backups. But it still, it, it didn't do a bad job. It just had a different effect to the other paintbrushes. And it was still really good. So out of all three of them, I would recommend these two. Unfortunately, I wouldn't recommend wasting your money on a 50-odd pound paintbrush. Unless you're a super serious painter where the quality of this and the specifics of this paintbrush are perfect for you i wouldn't recommend it but the medium paintbrush the 15 pound one it, it was a good paintbrush and it did perform really well i think i would prefer a thinner version of it um but it was really nice and the 15p paintbrush i'll use that again as well that was um it was really nice and i'll just have to be careful the fact that it does leave a rough scratchy texture because of how stiff the brush is but these two really good unfortunately this one it was a waste of my money but hopefully you enjoyed that little experiment on testing paint brushes from different price points let me know down below if you feel the same way as i do whether that 50 quid brush is a waste of money and whether you should stick to more cheaper paint brushes and i will have to say i probably will still use all three of them paint brushes Obviously, because I've bought them now, so I'm stuck with them. But they were all really good. I just can't pay 50-odd pound for a paintbrush, even on I just did, just to show you guys. But in my normal life, I would never spend 50 pound on a paintbrush because it's, for me, it's ludicrous. But 15 pound, it's, it's all right. 15 pence, yes. But make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really, really helps out a lot. And give the video a big thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.